All right, today we're gonna install a trailer brake controller on a 2011 Nissan Pathfinder. Here's the parts here. Prodigy P3 brake controller, brackets, some wires, which I don't think we need. Um, this handy little connector, which will plug right into the factory Nissan harness. Um, and then we need a relay for under the hood. I just got a Dura last one from AutoZone. One other thing I'll note that I've already done to this vehicle. So it came with the hitch from the factory, but it had a four pin uh, wiring plug for trailers. So I added this seven pin after the fact. Um, you can get the factory seven pin from Nissan or online and it plugs right into the standard location. So it was pretty easy to install. Um, and then I also have airbags on this. You can see the red airbags there. Uh, you can, when you're towing, you can bump up the air pressure and it really stiffens up the rear of the vehicle. So I'm planning on towing a 4,500, 5,000 pound enclosed trailer. So those will definitely be helpful. Um, and you can see the two straighter valves right there for adjusting the air. Okay, first step here is gonna be to locate where this uh, connection plug will plug into. So if we climb down under here, and take a look around it looks like it is going to be this guy here tape the little stuff off let's see this should plug right in yep so that's it now we are connected to the factory harness okay next we have to figure out where to put the brake controller where to physically mount it so, I don't think I'm going to be happy with it if I put it down here under the dash. I think it's going to be in the way. It's going to be hard to fiddle with. So, I'm going to try to put it in this pocket right here. Okay, to get at that pocket, first thing you gotta do is take this off. Seems like all you do is go in here and just grab a hold of it and uh, yank up and just pull the clips out. And that's off. Next step is you have to take this piece off, which you have to put the shifter in either second or first to do that. And I guess you have to have the power on in order to move it so move it and then it seems that you can't turn the key out while you do that so hopefully it doesn't beep the whole time so yes it is still beeping but next you got to take this piece out so to do that first you grab here uh, you pull these two clips out you go down here pull these two out and then lift at the back here and then the whole thing will slide out Pull those two, pull in the center, and come in the back and pop those two out. And then with that off, uh, we can go ahead, pull those connectors off if we want to, or and try to drill it without taking them off. Not sure yet. So it comes with two different mounting brackets you could use. Um, the small one, which you can use with a removable clip or a bigger one, which is more permanent. Um, I decided to go with the smaller one. Um, and here I've already got my holes drilled can't really see them, but I've already mounted this up, mounted the holes, so it will go in there. Uh, now all I gotta do is just bolt it down and then drill another hole to fit the cable through and we'll be good to go. 
So I've been fiddling around with mounting it for a while here. Um, since this thing's not meant to be in a pocket, it's kind of a pain to mount. But what I ended up having to do is instead of using the self-tapping screws, which would have had to come up from the bottom, I just used a number eight machine bolt and a, a nut. So I've been playing around with getting them in there, getting them tight, uh, almost finished. So once I get that tightened up, then I can drill a hole in the back here to put the connector through um, and put it back together and we'll be good to go. Okay, there's the final product down in there. You can see I've got the two nuts and bolts to hold it to the plastic bin. And then I've got the two self-tapping screws to hold the bracket to the little clip-on thing. So that's all good and fine. The next thing will be just have to drill a hole. Found a hole saw here. It's uh not sure what size it is. Like it says 41 millimeters so about an inch and a half and drill that hole i can route it up through the frame and then that's it okay so now i've got my hole down there got my bracket mounted and i've got my cable in here which is what this guy is this comes up through the through the frame there so now I'm going to put it all back together. Grab the cable, stick it through the hole, plug it in, and then um, as you can see there, I've already got power to it because I have the uh, accessory power on the vehicle and then I'll just slide it into place here and there's the finished product installed pretty secure um, it's already got power to it so this clips back in just the reverse of how it came out push the bottom in first and then the middle and lastly push the top in it went in and came out pretty easily. Um, all that's left in here, this looks a little dirty, so I'm gonna clean this up first, put that piece back on, and then we can move on to the last step. Now, the very last step here is under the hood. I have to come up here by the fuse box, take this little one off, um, and then there's a relay that you have to add, or you might have to add, I had to add it. Um, just to provide power to everything. So I got this from AutoZone, 18 bucks, and all you do is uh, pop it on. And then that's it. Now that that's done, uh, that's it, we're installed. There's the brake controller. It's already got power to it. start the car and it gives me a little warning that says no trailer connected because I don't have a trailer connected yet so once I get my trailer hooked up we'll be good to go all right thanks for watching let me know if you have any questions